education can be at the forefront of fighting back against neoliberalism. It's become a, a, a bigger revolt against uh, the austerity measures in Quebec, and it's even now becoming a, a movement that's questioning the um, liberal democracy and that's questioning also capitalism uh, fundamentally. Concretely, what it's turned into is just like a street-based movement. In Montreal, there's more than one demonstration every single day. Uh, for the past 25 days, there's been a night demo every night with the slogan Manif chaque soir jusqu'à la victoire. Demo every night until victory, until we win. The main uh, reason for the strike was the um, proposed increase in tuition fees, um, an increase of 75%. Um, so that was fundamentally the, um, the reason that uh, most of the students uh, decided to strike. For, for the first time, I think, in the history of the student movement in Quebec, uh, well, for the, in the last 20 years or so, there's a clear consensus um, across the board because there are different student associations that are, um, that are leading the struggle. Um, there are two that are more traditionally more mainstream, the Fédération étudiante universitaire du Québec and the Fédération étudiante collégiale, so the, one that the federation that represents the colleges and the federation that represents the uh, universities. Um, traditionally more mainstream, but, uh, this, but have been very uh, solid in being in solidarity with um, the more radical um, um, federation, which is a coalition, actually, class. Um, and so the federations are, um, are demanding um, a freeze of the tuition. Uh, Klaus is demanding um, free education. You have like a student group like either in your department or at the level in which you're studying. So, And you have your weekly general assemblies. You meet, you make proposals, you bring them forward. And like there's just, uh, it's a lot of meeting time, but it also means that there's just like um, a lot more accountability, you know? like. The idea is that so something like the class, if they're having, um, uh, if they're trying to discuss things with the at a government with the government, they can't make a decision unless they consult their bodies, and that body, like at the Congress, has to consult each of the student associations. So that's kind of the way it's been happening. So students attend their general assemblies and then push things forward, and there's all these different levels of it. And that seems to be a real key to how this strike has happened. Um, partially because it means that you can start small, right? You can have one or two people who are really into it, they organize a general assembly or an organization in their department, and then it can spread throughout the university. You don't have to start big. You don't have to start at the top. You do see a lot of bottom-up movement. It is very much of a bottom-up movement. Nobody called a strike and said, okay, we're going to strike. And for the first several weeks of it, before there was uh, what, they, what they're calling an unlimited general strike, um, the strike mandates for, were for a week at a time. Every week they went back to the membership and every week, um, department by department, university by university, they voted to maintain the, the, the strike mandate. The strike developed, I would say, into a full-blown social movement that's still very much based, uh, has a, at its core um, opposition to tuition hikes but that has been an opening to talk just about wider issues and just uh, that that's evolved into an, an anti-capitalist movement, I think. People, there was night and night marches every night. Um, there was more and more um, um, tar tactics that were targeting uh, public, private property, always targeting you know, banks and, uh, and, and um, institutions and targets that represent uh, global capitalism. And um, there are many, many actions that are being organized that are not actually being organized by the student federations. Klaus, Feck, Orfeck. So you've got, um, this is why you have this, uh, this amazing spontaneity and actions going on all the time, all day every day is because there's different groups of people organizing actions at different times. And that's the strength, I think, of this movement is that it's, it's difficult to sort of pin down who's doing what and therefore the, uh, it's very disruptive for the state, um, the government, the police, um, all the officials that are trying to manage this strike. Sometimes when you're, you're out in the street, you're yelling all the same slogans as the people around you and then 
one group starts yelling an anarchist slogan, and then another group starts yelling a nationalist slogan. And then you're like, oh, well, let's say you're an anarchist, <laughs> you're like, oh, we don't see eye to eye, or like, you know, it's interesting that there can be some, count, some common ground on things like uh, being against tuition hikes, being for the strike, but then also having all these other questions that remain unanswered. Uh, a lot of people say, well, if we have tuition hikes and if the, the tuition hikes reach the, the level of, uh, of Canada, then we are not like a different society anymore. And that's one way that uh, uh, I think the national question is really like uh, close to the one uh, against tuition, uh, tuition hikes. And um, that's why it's kind of hard, because I'm, I'm not a nationalist, of course, but uh, the, the thing is, a lot of people think that uh, it's really what makes the Quebec different of having uh, more accessible uh, education, more accessible healthcare. And um, so the, ba the basis of, uh, of a discourse in uh, the, current, uh, the current strike or the current struggle is really associated with the, uh, the different kind of society that Quebec is and or should be. And uh, some people see the, um, the, the public services uh, struggle as uh, as the main, that's one of the main things that might uh, keep the difference bef between like Quebec and the rest of Canada. Law 78 um, has been called La Loi Matraque, which is the Baton Law, and it was passed on Friday, uh, May 18th, um, in an extremely rushed session of debate. Uh, it was, uh, I think it was within 20 hours, 24 hours, that it was adopted at National Assembly. What it's doing is it's suspending the winter semester. Now, the other part of the law is you're not allowed to pick it, a university or a college. You're not allowed to demonstrate um, 50 meters um, for within 50 meters of the territory of the university or the CEGEP. But this, the fear that this is creating because of the hefty fines and the, um, and is that people will no longer demonstrate. And you've seen the impacts already. It's a moment of big intimidation and of uh, creating fear with the hope that that will calm the movement. The message that we send today is very clear. For us, the right to manifest, the right to express is fundamental. It cannot be expressed. What we say today is that we will continue to play with these rights. The red square is, um, the expression is, in French is carrément dans le rouge, which means totally in depth, and carré also means square. So it's a red square to symbolize how indebted we'll become from this. It just really took off this year, in 2012. Uh, people who are either part of the movement or who just support it wear a red felt square, any kind of red square, usually on their shirt. The red square is a uh, is a symbol of um, of support for the uh, student movement, and uh, it's a symbol of support for um, for the idea of a tuition freeze. So it's a it's a sign that uh, that you know we're fighting against oppression, we're fighting against exploitation, and we're together on this.